Would you like to know how to lose weight over 50 without dieting? Then stick around. I'm diving deep into the plan that is helping me to shed weight. Hey everybody, I'm Kathy. I'm 55 years old and I am on a journey to lose 50 pounds. I have been working one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian since July of 2023 and to date I have lost 20 pounds. I didn't gain any weight over the holidays but I have never felt so comfortable with my food choices because in the past, as somebody that has been overweight most of her life, I have always been a full-time weight watcher or dieter. So I was always counting calories or counting points. And I always found a way to cheat the system. And I knew that it was no longer working for me. So I was given the opportunity to take an online nutrition course through my doctor's health clinic. And before you ask, it's only for patients at the clinic that I go to. So I urge you to ask your healthcare provider if they have something similar, or maybe they could um, introduce you to a virtual dietitian, or you, know, you could meet somebody in person. But my dietitian only works with my doctor's patients. So she has really helped me to have a healthier relationship with food. This is not a diet. It is a healthy lifestyle. And this is the way I'm going to eat for the rest of my life. And I have to tell you, I was so skeptical whenever I took the online course because we would meet for about an hour and a half once a week for eight weeks. And I have four pages of information from that course that I'm sharing with you today. So get a pen and a paper. You're going to want to write some of this down. I was really skeptical when she introduced us to the balanced plate approach. And what the balanced plate is, you take a dinner plate. My dinner plate, the one that I use is 10 inches. You know, if you have smaller, that's fine. It's not so much really about the size of the plate. We never really um, talked about that. But you just take the dinner plate, you put a line right down the middle. So one half is gonna be for vegetables. And then this half, you're gonna have it. So you have a half and two quarters. So a half of the plate is vegetables, a quarter of the plate is your protein, and the other quarter is healthy, complex, fiber-rich carbohydrates. And that is how I think with every meal that I eat. Now, do I have to eat that every meal is like, you know, broccoli, chicken, and uh, quinoa? No just apply that to like soups or stews. Like last night I made homemade lasagna for dinner. So we had lasagna and then I had a big heaping of salad. It's all about balance. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today. So I have two takeaways from working one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian. First of all, there is no such thing as bad food. I remember when I was following Weight Watchers, I love lima beans. I love grapes. Uh, rice, and you would always get dinged for them. So I would feel guilty if I had a cup of lima beans, I forget, it might have been five points. So five points out of like 25 points in a day is a lot. <laughs> but yet I had no problem going, you know, through the drive through getting a burger and fry and spending 25 points. And then I just wouldn't eat the rest of the day or I would eat and I just wouldn't count it. And that just no longer served me. And I needed to find a way to lose weight that would work for me where I'm not obsessing about food because that's what I've always found when I've followed a diet. I'm always thinking about the next meal and what can I eat? So with this way of eating, I don't think about food. Like I'll kind of make a plan for the week ahead. I still have to work on that and get better at meal prep and planning. But you know, it's just taken the obsession of food away. So there are no bad foods, but there are foods that you should eat in moderation. And we'll get into that later on. For me, I've never been a binge eater or an overeater. I don't eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm stressed and I've had a lot of stress in my life. <laughs> Who hasn't, right? Um, but I've had like long-term chronic stress dealing with a um, very serious illness and, um, with my husband and it has caused me at times to make really bad choices. So I know I'm a sugar addict, I'm an emotional eater. I have a video about that here. And I crave candy and I crave drive through food. That's my soothing mechanism, what has helped me get through those difficult times. It wasn't the best choice, but it's what worked for me at the time. 
So you have to find something, a healthier thing that can help you, you know, deal with stress. And that's a struggle that I'm still struggling with and still trying to figure out. And when I figure something out, I'll be sure to let you know. So two of the takeaways that I learned from working with a dietitian is that there are no bad foods. And the second takeaway is quit obsessing about food and quit counting calories. Just think about the balanced plate approach. So I am an emotional eater. And one of the things that I had to do was stop bringing like candy into the house because I would always end up putting, you know, Werther's candy on the grocery list and they would end up in the house. And for me, it's just too dangerous because I know that candy's in the cupboard and it just speaks to me and it's going to be speaking to me until it's all gone. So for now, I don't feel comfortable bringing candy into the house because I know that is a weakness of mine. And until I... Uh, learn another coping mechanism it's better left in the store now is that to say that I'll never eat Werther's again absolutely not like this has to work for me for life and whenever I'm told that I cannot have something I want it all the more and I'm gonna have it so I just want to share this one tip before I get into the info with you it's worked for me it might be able to work for you if you're an emotional eater like me and you use food as a band-aid because a lot of times I would eat like, you know, stuff that wasn't good for me just to push my emotions down because I had to get through a day or a situation. And that was the only way that I knew how to cope. And like I said, this no longer serves me and I'm looking for a better way to cope. But what I have found along the way is, and it's taken me a while because as a lifelong sugar addict, it's not just something you can forget about. So what I have found was in the beginning, it was really difficult the first couple of weeks not to have any like processed sugar like candy or you know cookies or things like that and I would get a headache and oh I would just want it so bad. So what I told myself was whenever I get a craving let's just say for a milkshake I would sit down and I would say what is it about that milkshake that is going to make you feel better? What can that milkshake give you that you cannot give yourself? And I would just think, I don't know, I just want it. Like, what is that feeling that you need? And the feeling that I would come up with is that I need comfort. I need to be soothed in that moment. So I would say to myself, okay, you can have the milkshake, but you have to wait 24 hours. And if in 24 hours you are still like dead set on that milkshake, then go and have the milkshake and be done with it. And nine times out of 10, the next day I forgot about the milkshake. But what I'm getting at is if I didn't have that conversation with myself, then I would probably, you know, eat everything in the house and still go get the milkshake. So just try that and see if it helps you out. It's just something simple you can try. And it's just something I learned on my own that is really helping me. And what I also have learned now that I am not buying like candy and bringing it into the house is that say over the Christmas holidays, we went out and I indulged in a few candies at other people's houses. And then I come home at night and oh, my joints were so sore and I was sweating and having hot flashes. And I thought I must be coming down with the flu. Like my joints are aching so, so bad, like bad to the point that I had to get up and take a Tylenol. They were just so painful. And then I thought, Ugh, you ate candy. So I can actually see now the effect that processed sugar has on my body. And that was mind opening because for years I went around with, you know, sore joints and I thought, guess I'm just getting old and this is what happens, but it's not, it's a sugar. And I can also tell, like, say if I do go out and we have like a dessert or something, my face gets puffy. And I noticed that and I said, that's the effect that sugar has on me. So it's so, so important to become mindful of the food that you're eating and just studying the effect that it has on your body. So why are balanced meals important? Balanced meals help nourish your body properly throughout the day, which helps increase your energy levels, stabilizes your blood sugars, and improves your mood, which has an impact on food cravings. They help you to meet your daily nutrition intake, like fiber, protein, healthy fats, and vitamins. Helps decrease mindless snacking and overeating due to increased hunger. And it helps decrease stress and anxiety around food. 
So you don't have to be perfect and it's okay if you slip up. Don't beat yourself up. Just move on. It's fine. It's all about balance. So what is a balanced plate? Take a dinner plate, a regular size, and my dinner plate happens to be 10 inches. If yours is smaller, that's fine. Just, it's not so much about the size of the plate. It's about what I'm gonna tell you next. So you divide your dinner plate in half, and then the one half of the plate, you're gonna divide it into half. So you're gonna have a half and two quarters. On the side that is the half of the plate, you're gonna load that with vegetables. And then it could be a salad, it could be broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, whatever vegetable you like. And then in the quarter portion, that's your protein area. So you have your chicken or beef, if you like fish, beans, lamb, whatever protein sources you like, just that goes there. And then in the last quarter is where you have your fiber rich complex carbs, like quinoa, brown rice. Although my dietitian said that there isn't really a significant difference between white rice and brown rice, like nutritionally, there is like a tiny bit, but not enough really to, you know, worry about. So, you know, if you just want to eat white rice, that's fine too. Don't stress about it. Vegetables are important because they fill us up without giving us a lot of calories. And then you can also have two planned snacks throughout the day. You don't have to have them, but it's better if you do have them just because it's going to keep, you know, your hunger at bay and it's going to keep you feeling full and satiated. And I drink two to three liters of water a day. I don't drink coffee, tea or alcohol. Um, I never asked her about alcohol because, you know, it's not something that I drink, but I would maybe ask your doctor what they're going to recommend. Maybe they're going to say one or two drinks a week. I honestly don't know, but water is really important. You can have milk, yogurt, and butter. Uh, I put butter on my potato. If I'm having some potatoes, I put butter on my broccoli because I just cannot eat those two things without butter. Now I'm not putting, you know, a heaping amount of butter and just being, you know, realistic and just putting a little bit of dab just so you get that taste. Because I cannot do something where I feel like I'm deprived. Otherwise, it's, it's just not going to work. I make my own salad dressing. So I take olive oil and balsamic vinegar and it's a one to three ratio. How am I going to explain this? Um, like don't make this a meal, but say you have one cup of olive oil, you would put a third of a cup of balsamic vinegar. So that's a one to three ratio. But I just like throw it in as I'm making the salad and just kind of taste it and see if I like it. I don't like it too vinegary, but that's a healthy salad dressing rather than the ones you can buy that are processed and full of sugar. And olive oil is good for you. Protein is important because it builds and maintains muscle mass. It keeps the immune system healthy and keeps us feeling full. Fiber-rich complex carbs include quinoa, lentils, sweet potato, whole wheat, oatmeal, corn, kidney beans. There, there are others, you know, you can Google them. Fiber-rich carbs are important because they fill us up. They keep our bowels regular and they stabilize sugar levels so we don't get those spikes where we crave sugar and unhealthy things. They provide energy, fiber, minerals, and vitamins. But be mindful of your portion. Don't heap your plate up. Like don't have your dinner plate totally covered with food. You want to see, you know, bits of your, your plate. And I never go back for a second plate. So if I was still feeling hungry, I would load up on vegetables and maybe add in a little more protein because both are good for you. And, you know, there aren't any calories in vegetables. So be mindful of your portion sizes. You know, don't heap your plate up so it looks like a mountain of food. You still want to be able to see your plate. You know, you don't want every little square inch of it covered with food. You know, just be mindful of what you're doing. So here are some ideas for some balanced breakfasts. And the first one is what I eat 99% of the time. So I have Greek yogurt, berries, and a little bit of granola. This is the granola that I use. I use less than a quarter of a cup a day and it's by Nature Valley and it's their protein granola and I buy mine on Amazon, but I know you can buy it in some grocery stores. 
So I know somebody's going to say, yes, but granola has sugar in it. It does, but it works for me. And my dietitian said, because I'm eating it with a high protein Greek yogurt, it balances out. Now, you don't have to use the granola. You can just have the berries, but I like to have a little bit of a crunch. You can also use nuts, but you also have to be careful of nuts, like never to go over about a quarter cup a day because although they have really good uh, fats in them for our health, they are also fattening. So just use common sense. About the Greek yogurt, I still use the Oikos 2% vanilla. I refuse to use the fat-free, the sugar-free, the plain. I tried them all, I do not like it. So as I said earlier, it is important for this to work around the food that you like because Greek yogurt did not get me fat. Again, it was the sugar and you know the drive-through food. So just try and forget about the good and the bad labels when it comes to food because everything in balance is fine. So that is my typical breakfast. About I don't measure um, my food, but I know from being like a Weight Watcher for so long what like a cup looks like. I probably eat about three quarter to one cup of 2% vanilla Oikos Greek yogurt. And then I'll put in, you know, a bunch of blueberries, raspberries. They're great. Those berries have lots of um, antioxidants. They're good for us. And then I'll sprinkle on the granola and then I just like to stir everything up. And that can keep me full for a good four to five hours because there's so much protein in that and I love it. So, you know, you might like eggs or sometimes I'll have eggs for supper instead because I don't like them for breakfast so much unless I'm away on vacation and then I like them. But my go-to for breakfast is uh, basically that. An example of what I would have for lunch is a turkey sandwich. So I buy like whole grain bread. I don't buy white bread, never have, because it just turns right to sugar. So I always go for like multigrain, rye, you know, those other breads, like even the Ezekiel bread that I know that's really expensive now. I want like $10.99 for a loaf of bread. It's ridiculous. So I'll, I just use like Dempster's, whatever's on sale, as long as it's like whole grain, whole wheat. Uh, it's just better than white. And then I'll have like tomato, lettuce. I'll have a slice of mozzarella or a slice of cheddar cheese. Uh, so I'm still having dairy, but I don't drink my dairy. Like I very rare, rarely will I drink milk. I get my dairy through like cheese, yogurts, things like that. But it is not off limits. Like you can have a glass of milk. And then for dinner, I'll have like maybe a chicken stir fry where it's tons and tons of vegetables. And then I'll have a little bit of rice on the side. Also, you could have like stew where you have like tons of vegetables. And what I do for the broth is I buy those Tetra packs from Campbell's. I usually get the ones without any salt just because I don't like a lot of added salt in my diet. And um, yeah, you could use like vegetable broth or beef broth. And then you just like put in your your stewing meat and then all of your vegetables. I'll link a video that I did a while ago where I made a beef stew. And then you could think even if you have like, say the plate in mind, you could have like a steak. And for portion sizes for meat, what I usually do, I just eyeball it. Like you don't have to do this, but this is just kind of ingrained in me. I can eat about that much. And that's probably about four to five ounces of chicken or beef or whatever. So if, say you want to barbecue a steak, um, have the steak and then you could have like a salad with it or a bunch of veggies like broccoli, green beans, whatever vegetables you like. And then for your complex rich carbohydrate, you could um, probably have like maybe a whole wheat bun or you could have rice or um, potato. Like potatoes are not bad. They're good with the skin on because there's lots of fiber and lots of uh, good stuff for us in the skin. You know, just kind of um, think about a meal that you like and just look at it. And if you think that it looks healthy, as long as it's not highly processed or comes from a box, just try and stay away from those things. Uh, like yesterday, we had lasagna. I made homemade lasagna. So I had lasagna and then you're going to say, well, what would you have with that? Well, I had a salad with it. So that's in balance. And also something else a dietitian told me, don't feel pressured that you have to make everything from scratch, that it has to be perfect. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. If you don't have time to cook, go to the grocery store, buy yourself like a frozen lasagna and buy one of those bag salads and that's perfectly fine because it's balanced. Like don't put so much pressure on yourself thinking that you have to have this perfect, you know, plate. Like it doesn't have to be on a plate. It can be soups or stew, it could be um, spaghetti. Like my hamburger soup, I'll link that recipe here. That's like a balanced meal. You have protein in it with a hamburger. You could use ground turkey instead. There's all kinds of vegetables in it. Like your balanced meal doesn't just have to be like, you know, meat, carb, vegetable. Think of outside of the box, like think of soups, stews, things like that. Even smoothies. Lots of times, you know, I'm just not hungry. I don't feel like cooking and I don't feel like making anything. So I'll just take out my Nutri-Blender and then I'll put in some Greek yogurt. I'll throw in some blueberries, some spinach, um, a little bit of water, maybe a half a banana. And I just make myself a smoothie, but I'll also add ground flaxseed to it. I just recently started doing that because I met with a dietitian, and she said I still wasn't getting enough protein or fiber and I struggle with getting protein in. So she suggested trying some flaxseed but it has to be ground and I'll link this one. I bought it off of Amazon. This is made in Manitoba. Yeah, it's great because it's great to lower cholesterol. I think it gives us fiber. So I just put like a heaping teaspoon of this into my smoothie. You could put this into your scrambled eggs when you're making eggs or, you know, sprinkle it over your cereal. It kind of has like a little nutty taste to it, which I like. You can have pizza. Like have a slice of pizza, but then make yourself a nice green salad with like some spinach or some mixed greens. I love arugula, like have a couple of big handfuls of, of salad green and you don't have to make a complicated salad. You don't have to put like, you know, cucumbers, tomatoes, all that stuff in your salad. Lots of times what I do is I just take the salad greens and then I'll just put olive oil and balsamic vinegar on it, toss it and that is my salad. So it's so, so easy and simple. For the snacks, um, she's telling me that I really should eat both of my snacks because I usually will only eat one in the evening. So these are my go-to snacks. I eat these snacks all the time. I don't get bored. Like I really don't think about food. It's just to fuel me. In the afternoon, I was having an orange, but she suggested that I have an orange with maybe five walnuts. Or what I always have in the evening is I'll make myself a little charcuterie board. I'll have like an apple and then I'll have a cheese stick and probably about 10 almonds. You want to limit your nuts to about a quarter cup a day. So if I'm having the walnuts in the afternoon, I won't have as many almonds in the evening because they are good for us, but they can also be fattening. So you just want to be, I guess, mindful of those. That in a nutshell is the balanced plate approach. It is so simple and easy that I know you're probably shaking your head and saying, oh, really, it's that easy, like it's gonna work? Trust me, I was, I doubted this so much and I could not believe it that um, I was losing weight, like not stressing about how many calories or how many points. And it's just so nice to have that stress taken off my back that if I know that whenever I do groceries, I fill my fridge with lots of healthy vegetables and protein sources and, you know, those complex carbohydrates, then I can't screw up because everything that I'm going to be working with is good for me. Now you just have to be good 80% of the time. I still go to the drive through Like I'm shooting three videos today. I'm getting tired of talking to understanding, so I'm probably gonna treat myself and have a burger and a fry. But that's okay, because if I did not give myself that treat, then, you know, things are just gonna go off the rails. I just can't do that every day, but once in a while is fine. Now I've been asked, am I exercising? No, I'm not, but it's something that I have to start. And a few of you told me what works for you. And I want to say thank you for making me think about it this way. You said, don't think of it as exercise. Think of it as an investment in your health. And I never really thought about exercise that way, but this just seemed to click and it made so much sense because 
I hate the thought of exercising. Like, it is so bloody cold out here today. It's like minus 20 Celsius and it's icy. And I like to walk outside, but I'm not going to because I don't want to fall and break something. So I dug out some DVDs, those uh, Walk with Leslie, Leslie Sansone, those walking things. You can find all kinds of free ones on YouTube. And I'm just going to walk in the house now. And I'm not going to say I have to walk 30 minutes every day. But the dietitian recommended just set goals that are attainable. Can you walk for 15 minutes a day, maybe three times a week? Start with that. And if I see that I achieve that goal, then, you know, keep moving the goalpost. And that is how it becomes a habit. So I really appreciate you sharing like that thought process. Don't think of exercise as exercise or something you have to do. Think of it as an investment into your health. Because as we get older, you know, the risk of fall increases. We can pull muscles, you know, hurt ourselves. So yeah, I want to be older and healthy and be healthy as I uh, age. So that's how I'm going to start thinking about exercise. Not just putting so much pressure on myself that I have to do it, but it's something that I want to do. I do have a few videos of what I eat in a day and I will be adding more uh, in the coming weeks. I know we've been saying that, but I just, January has been kind of a tough month for me, so I just haven't felt like uh, filming. So I, in the future, I, I will be sharing what I eat in a day, but I think I gave you lots of great information today. Bookmark the video, come back and watch it. Just remember, keep it simple. It's just all about balance. Don't be hard on yourself. Like if you want to go out and have a treat, have a treat, but just maybe not do it every day and just, you know, stock your fridge with healthy foods and don't bring temptation into the house. That has really helped me because I know if I bought myself a bag of Werther's, you know, they would be gone in an hour or two because it's just like a, a really old bad habit that I had. That's what I would do is just mindlessly you know, eat them. And it just really, it wasn't about the candy. It was about just soothing myself. And I, I am very stressed right now with things going on that I really want some candy, but I know like I, I just can't go there. So I'm just trying to find what works for me. I'm happy to pass that information on to you. So I hope that you have found this helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It is free. Please share this video with anybody that you think might benefit from it. And I will link a few of my other um, weight loss videos and you can go check that, those out so you can catch up. So thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you soon. Bye.